we know that we have no other gods. We have only one God, our Creator, the Creator of heavens and earth. And that is only one we cling to. The one we put our trust is the only one we anchor our faith onto. Because we know we have no way to go. By His grace tonight, I will be speaking unto us on a topic I tell you, you can rise and shine. I want to assure you that it is possible for you to rise and shine. The reason is because you have a source. You have an origin that is different from any kind of origin. You have a stable origin. You have an origin that is not variable. An origin that is suitable, very strong and fair. And this is what the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 23, from verse 1 to 7, explains clearly to us. In the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 23, who will read verse 2? Say, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruled over men must be just. Ruling in the fear of God. When you are connected to this God, some certain things will begin to take place in your life automatically. You don't need to worry about how you will grow, how you will succeed. In most cases, the world where we are, our environment can be terrified. It can be petrified as well. In such a way that you can be compounded or beat by tenderness of fear. But when we have God on our side, we can remain stable. King David, we call him King David. There was a time he was called David. There was no crown on his head. It was like any ordinary man. But a time came in his life. God said, No. And as to come to this ordinary fellow, and as to come to a king without a crown, he was anointed by God himself. He sent someone to go and anoint him and want to be to the book of First Samuel chapter 16. But after that, for this man to be on the throne, be honored as a king, it become very difficult. Challenges around him were so fierce. It looked like he cannot make it. It looked like he cannot be a crown king in his life. But one day, God orchestrated his miracle. I don't know how you have been Blowing here and there, you are, the tempest has been carrying you here and there. It's like you are not stable in your feet. But today, the Lord will guarantee your future. The Lord will guarantee your presence. The Lord will make your feet firm in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 22, 1 Samuel, chapter 22, Bible gave us. Illustration how God began his miracle in the life of David. How God started the process, how David will be crowned, how David will be enthroned as a king. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 22, the Bible said, David therefore departed thence. And escaped to the cave of Adla. And when his brethren and all his father house ladies, they went down Tita to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, 
gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about four hundred men. Now, this man called David has a challenge. It's not a challenge of a death. His own challenge is more greater than his household people who came to do for him. That is say he escaped. What did he escape for? Why was he running away? What did you escape for? Why are you running away? What is that problem that is pursuing you? The problem of David is was Saul. So was a man after his life. What was chasing this man here and there was spirit of death. There is a man who lift up his sword against him and said, I want to destroy him. I want to end his life. I pray for you. Everyone holding armor or ammunition and lift it up against you and say they want to end your life. I want to tell you categorically tonight. The Lord will take them in for surprise. At the end of the day, they will see themselves being frustrated with all their weapons. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will shatter all the ones that hold the weapon. And the weapon in the mighty name of Jesus. King David ran and hide in the cave of Adla. While he was there, his brother heard about it. And these his brother also had their own problem. Because their king was away. The one who will relieve them was in trouble. I pray for you anywhere you are. Everyone that God has anointed to help you, that is in a problem. Today, the Lord will set that fellow free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This being was a man that his brethren looked up to, but he has no opportunity to help them because you himself had a new challenge. I pray for you. Are you there? People are looking up to you. They believe you can help them. But because of what you are passing through right now, because of the body, because of the level of load you are carrying, you cannot even help them at all. I pray for you. The Lord will relieve you of that heaviness and that load, that body in the mighty name of Jesus. The body there itself will surface on your behalf and it will relieve you in the name of Jesus Christ. These people know where they run to. They run to David. Bible says some of them are in distress. Some of them are indebted. He can't help that. Someone who is in distress, he can also very close to a dead point. His case man also similar to the one running up and down. Because when he sees someone is in distress, the such fellow can be in between death and life. So they look for SOS. They quickly run to where they also can find refuge. They went to the cave of Adlam as his own refuge. It was his own hiding place. So these people run to him, there are 400 men. And when they came to him, they submit to him. And he became captain over them. I pray for you. All those who God have anointed to be under you, to submit to you and lift up your ministry, your career, the Lord will send them to you this year in Jesus' name. The case of King David is not different from some people's cases today. Their life is in 
in danger. In Psalm 107, Psalm 107, when we read from verse 17 to 20, 17 to 20, Psalm 107, Bible says, Fool, because of their transgression, because of their iniquity, they were afflicted. Fool. I can see that most of the problems we go through in life, it might be from the act of our foolishness, acts of lack of wisdom, being far away from the genuine wisdom of God. He said, because of their transgression and their liberty, they were afflicted. They are so upon all manners of me, and they draw near unto death. They cry unto the Lord in their trouble. Another version says, in their distress. And he sent them out of their distress. So, the Bible says, he sent them out of what? Their distress. Their distress. They are under depression. They have been subdued and submerged. They are under. They are not over. Something has pressed them, subdued them. They have been subjugated. They are under control of someone who is powerful than they. But the Bible says they cry unto God in their distress. Who is that fellow today that will cry to God, that will rely on God, that will solicit God, that will depend on God and say, only God can do it for me? Who say they cry? This is for wrong to get me to, and David accepted them. Proverbs 18, verse 10. Proverbs 18, verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Righteous run into it, you will say. If you know where to run to, you will be delivered. These people, they run to a right place. They refuse to go to a wrong place. When the people was running away, so was in command. So was the king of Israel. But they refused to follow the stranger. They went to their own blood brother. They refused to be a betrayer of confidence. They tried to manage the problem with their household man called David. Is it David? Even though you are in distress, you are in trouble, you are running away, you are like a vagabond, we are lying ourselves with you. We cooperate with you. We will not leave you. I will say they come out and, and you became captain over them, not king. And when your time of rising has come, God will raise up men for you. God knows that David is due for rising. He himself might have maybe say, Well, this is God, king is over. But he trusts God. That I will not leave God. I know with God all things are possible. If you look at the studies, you will know that this man went through a lot in his life. He went through a terrible time. He went through the time of tempest. But he refused to give up. Don't give up prematurely. Don't give up easily. Keep on pressing after the God. You can rise up. And shine. You can rise and shine. Isaiah chapter 16, from verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 16, from verse 1 and 2. God is the one who commands your rising. Bible say, Arise, shine. For the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Can anyone believe that the glory of God 
is using upon you, he is offering upon you right now. He said, Behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And then you will hear that you have not seen the glory of God in your life. Very soon, before this year goes to run to an end, people will begin to see the beautiful sign on you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When David was in this place, God still come to David and tell David, you cannot remain the thief. Somebody today, God is bringing you out of any hideout. Anywhere you have been hiding your head because of trouble. Anywhere you have been hiding because of wishes and wizard, because of demonic terrorism, the Lord will raise you up, God will bring you out of that hiding out, hide out in Jesus' name. David was in the cave. The location is called Adla. That is where he went to hide his head. Because he don't want someone to cut up his head away. So he went and hide his head in that place. But something happened to him suddenly. That thing will happen to you too today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. First Samuel chapter 22, verse 5. First Samuel 22, verse 5. And the prophet God said unto David, Abide not in this old. Depart and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Horus. David moved immediately. God sent a message to David. He said, Where you think you are hiding is not a secure place. Calamity might overtake you suddenly. I pray for you anywhere you think is a proper way, a proper location, proper place for you. You think is a place of refuge that God has not assigned for you. Today the Lord will pull you out. And the Lord will tell you to relocate you to the right place. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There are so many things God can give us as an information. To learn from David's story. He already concludes, I'm already hiding myself. But unknown to David, enemy has, is aware of his location. Enemy who is which haunting him away where he was hiding. Enemy already making arrangements to come, to go over there and abuse the place and get rid of it. I pray for you wherever you are. Anywhere you think you are that is dangerous, that you need to make a quick move and make a change. I pray the right information will come to you today in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will expose the secret of your enemy to you in the name of Jesus. You will not, you will not die, but you will rise up. Among those who have been risen, in the mighty name of Jesus. It's not just to rise, it's to rise and shine. So today's topic is you can rise and also shine. David did not only rise, but he shine. The hour of his breakthrough came suddenly. When he was hiding, message came to him, the genuine message, right information came to him and said, Mr. start get up. Live where you are. Because if you tell him where you are, something less might overtake you. And the Bible says immediately he quickly obeyed and departs to the forest of Herods. He was moving into the right direction. Where God wants to crown his effort. He had been laboring, he had been working hard. But God knew that time. Time for her to be faithful as God. And God need to send information to him. 
and say, Mister, make a move so that your year of favor can be declared unto humanity. Because time to before you are finally up. You have been running up and down, and time to terminate your adversary has already getting closer. According to the book of Psalm, Psalm 102, verse 13, the Bible says, Thou shalt rise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yea, the set time is called. This is your set time to rise up and shine. As God lived as his word lived, I decree unto you, this is your set time to rise and shine. Because your life has come. And the glory of the Lord is the reason upon you. Everyone that says you will not shine, you will outshine them in the mighty name of Jesus. Any power that says you will not rise and shine, you will outshine them in the mighty name of Jesus. Any authority that says you will not shine, you will shine and outshine them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So your location really matters where you are now and where God is taking you to really matter. Allow God to order your footstep. Give God time, give God chance in your life. Don't hinder his move. This man that spoke to King David, he accepted his voice, he obeyed. I did not say, Oh, I'm anointed. I'm a king, but he listened to the voice of the prophet. And by that, he was delivered. When you read down in that book, you will see that in the state, King Saul, who was looking for King David's life, get a quick notice that the man you are looking for had escaped. And he said, Dr. Isifu, that all of you have conspired against me. And there is none that swear that my son has made a league with the son of Jesse. And there is none of you that is sorry for me or show unto me that my son has taken up my servant against me to lie in wait as it is this day. I pray for you. Any power that wants to destroy you, the Lord will frustrate them. I want to tell you with all good hearts, this is me. Fear not. Do not be dismayed. All those who want to keep you down, they will end up seeing themselves on the floor. In the mighty name of Jesus. I have some word for you. First thing I want to tell you is that listen to God, Godly cancer. Don't ignore God's word. When the cancer from God comes to you, listen. It's a divine advice. Take it and walk upon it. Don't say who is the best in talking. Don't ignore Godly information. So listen to God in cancer. Psalm 122, verse 5. David listing. Bible said immediately he departs. Then the second thing is make a quick move. David make a quick move. In the book of First Kings, chapter 17, verse 10. Bible said Elijah departs to this to the region of Celibate. Elijah heard the voice of God that moved to the regions of Seraphites. I have prepared with you that we feed you there. Elijah did not say who you do. What did he have that he would use to feed you? The Bible says, so he arose and went to Seraphites. God told him in verse 9, he said, Arise, get thee into Seraphites, which belong to the to Sidon, and do it there. Behold, I have commanded the widow, the widow woman there, to sustain thee. 
listen to God's advice and make a quick move. This man quickly he move. He get up and leave his location and relocate to where God wants him to be. I pray for you today. The word of God will relocate you to where God wants you to be this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. Another thing I want to tell you, don't underrate anybody, don't look down on anybody. The people that came to David, they are also in trouble. David did not become revenge against them. He just did not become naughty against the people. Rather, he had commanded them, he accepted them. David did not get upset. Because of the people that came to him and said, You that are poor people, you don't have money. Uh, I myself am poor. So poor, poor, and poor. I become a captain of poor. No, that was not David's case. He had hope. He believed God that God can solve his problem and the problem of his subordinates. So don't drive away people from yourself. Don't drive people away from you. Don't say because they are poor, you can't accommodate them. They might be the one God that has assigned to lift you up. Don't look down on anybody. Have a tolerant spirit. Accommodate people. Don't look at their stature, don't look at their education, don't look at their, the, 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 their background. Just look at God in their life. The God that moved them to your direction, look at that God. Don't look down on people. Accept people that come to you. This David accept these 400 people. They are very poor people. He, he tried to manage them with his own crisis. So both of them, they departed from the cave of Adam and they relocated to the forest of Herod. And there they saw John. And something began to happen. The process of becoming a king begins to take place from there. Then another thing I want to give you as an advice is that when you are doing what God wants, God will raise a soulmate for you. God will raise your soulmate, people who will meet your desire. Those who will have a like manner like you, who have the same characters like you. I know they will say, oh, it is difficult to get somebody who is compatible. In most cases, God do some certain things in a such way that you don't believe it. You see someone who likes you, even to your soul, like your, you to your life. Both your death and life, the person does like you. And such a person is a son of soul, Jonathan. Despite the problem, the misunderstanding, the differences between King David and King Saul, Jonathan cleave to David. You know, I've talked about this man's story. It's really amazing thing that he lost everything. Where he really believed that the good things can come, he refused to remain that part. If I were Jonathan, I will also be like these 400 men. I will join them. But he refused. But God knew everything better. Maybe later he might change. And become a trouble to the throne of King David later. Might come up and say, moreover, maybe the kingship is a red tree in their own day that after my father lived, I'm supposed to be to know why you. But it's a way that God has permitted David to be. There is no doubt about that. God is a sovereign God. He does whatever he likes. Nobody can question him. It's unquestionable God. God cannot be questioned. So, God will raise your soul when you do the will of God. Then the next thing is that God will always raise up a destiny paper for you. The 400 men that came to the cave of Adam to honor David, they are his destiny ever. You know, sometimes we might think our favor is in our brothers. Our blessing is in our brothers. 
when we are ignorant that our blessing is in our location where we are. When we are looking new to our world, God might have made a provision nearby. If we can take care of people who are very close to us, then maybe they might be used to instrument for us tomorrow. But if we look down on them and look at their nature, their structure, that they don't have money, they are poor, and then they, at the end of the day, we just miss them. We lose everything. We know that everything in life is very Things are about to change. Never think that everything and remain fixed forever. As the Bible says, crown does not endure to all generations forever. To one generation forever, rather. So crown is not endure to one generation forever. So we see that crown was in the house of Saul, but now there is a transferring of crown to another house, and that house is the house of Jesus. So please, God can raise your destiny in in your own location. Then the next thing you need to learn is that God will always be with you in all your journey of life. David was in that place. He never knew what is about to happen. But God knew that there is a preparation to kill him. But God sent somebody to him and said, meet you where you are. If you study here, then dance on the, on the way. So, God will always be for you. Romans 8, stage 1, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, I will say, if God be for us, who can be against us? If God is with you, you are a winner. Most time, you know, we are compound with all kinds of Failure, something that cover, they cover coverage. On certain things that they're not allowed to see far. Because our vision is limited. Because of that, we could not see how God had been so, so long, so mighty, that can reach towards us and help us whenever we are in need. So if God is for us, who can be against us? It's a challenge. God said, who can dare you if I'm for you? In the book of Zechariah chapter 2, Zechariah chapter 2, when you read verse 4 and 5, then you read to verse 8 of it. You read from verse 4, 5 to 8. Let me say, I will be the wall of fire right about her, and I will be the glory in her midst. So that is God for you. So if God is with you, who can be against you? Let them gather together. They will definitely fall because God will handle them by Himself. Then the next thing I want to tell you, there's always trouble, problem, challenges here and there. But one thing I want you to hold on to, fear not. Don't give yourself to fear. Fear is natural. It's paramount. In every situation you see fear, even when you enter flight, you are traveling. When you enter a car or bus, you are traveling. There's always something happen suddenly along the way. I know in the air they don't break suddenly. Like you are on the car in the bus. You can break suddenly. Something can appear suddenly. You need to apply brake. But in the air, you face turbulence, terrible winds. That might distract your peace. But in all this thing, God will still tell you, my son, we are not I'm in control of the wind. I have power over wind, I can control wind, I can challenge all your challenges. In the book of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1, Isaiah 43, verse 41, God emphasizes. On his word, he said, Fear not, O oh, one of Jacob. You might be small, might look like a tender plant, a tender seed. He said, But, he said, But 
Now, God said the Lord, the created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art one. If you know that you belong to God, God owes you. As on certain circumstances, you just will be calm. Do not allow that circumstances to replace God in your life. The same God spoke to Israel. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, you read from verse 10 to 13. He said, Fear thou God, I am with thee. Be not in dismay at thy God. I will send thee, and I will help thee. I will hold thee with my hands, not even left. My hands. My right hands. I will hold you. Fear not. And you go down. You see, no of the detail of God's promise for his people. And lastly, you can do a spirit. Definitely, you can do a spirit. God has destined us to do exploits. But we need something. There's something we need to do. There is a prerequisite. The prerequisite is that you must depend on God. You must know your God. Daniel 11 32. Daniel 11 32. He said, We flatter the corrupt who are already dominant. But they. Yeah, know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. So, if you don't want to be exploited, know God better. Know what? Your God. Apostle Paul cried. He said, Jesus, he met me on my way to Damascus. He spoke to me. He sent me to the house of Ananiah. I recovered my sight. But I see something about him that I'm not clear. And that is what I'm pressing. I want to understand that. Because see, I can see this Christ Jesus that we are talking about. When you look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 of it, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, Apostle Paul said that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable to you unto his death. He said, being made conformable, conforming to his death. I want to have similar experience of his death. I want to understand the fellowship of his suffering. You know, when we are suffering, sometimes we are being glorified. Oh, most of us, I know our age of age suffering. If someone like me, I know what they call suffering. You don't need to know. Nobody needs to tell me the definition of suffering. But one thing I know, according to my own Bible, Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Romans 8, verse 18. The Bible says, I bear it for the present suffering cannot be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. How many of you here that carry glory that there is a revelation of glory in your life that God wants to reveal to the entire world? You will not die until you fulfill that glory. And as you may try, don't listen to their voices. But I reckon that the present suffering are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. You are a glory carrier. So wherever you are, I want you to begin to talk to your neighbor. My message for you today is that you can rise and shine. In the midst of darkness, you can still shine. Even gross darkness shall cover the head. Isaiah 60, verse 2 said it. He said, You will still shine. Because you have a source, you have an origin. Your origin is a light. Your source is a light. 
Matthew 5, 16. Matthew 5, 16. Bible tells us, let your light shine. Let it shine gloriously. Let your light illuminate everywhere. Let people see your light. Pray to God. If you are here, you are about to give up your feet. Hmm. You want to give up. Don't give up. I say, no, no, no. Don't cry when things go wrong. Don't give up. There is a time in your life you need to give up. You need to say no. You need to say no. You have right to say no. Matthew 18 verse 18 said, Whatsoever you bind on this earth shall be bind in heaven. Which is whatsoever you disallow here on earth. Heaven is as good with you. Pray today. And I am not going to give up until I rise and shine. Pray and begin to talk to God. Then, as you are praying, ask God, God should raise all your subordinates, your destiny, ever, wherever you are. All of them, God should locate them and send them to you wherever you are. David was in his own location, his destiny to help and came there and reach him. So, you need, don't need to be running up and down to see for your destiny. Don't need to begin to run up and down to look for help. Wherever you, you drop sugar, forget about cooking. Don't spread sugar on the floor. Then go away. Leave it for one day. And if you are lucky, if the sugar is much, you will still find those hands there. But if the sugar is just a little one, you just put it on the floor, you will just see that your sugar will disappear. The sugar is not disappear. It was the hand and not sugar that came there you know, to lick up your sugar. So wherever sugar is hard to relocate it. So wherever you are, your helper will locate you. Wherever there is light, all the insects, they come there and locate light and you seek for light. Because they also enjoy light. Pray today. Father, I know this enough. You have made me a king like David. I am a crown king. Because the book of Revelation also tells us that we are king. Therefore, let all my helper begin to look at me now. Let them rush to my safety. Let them rush for my help. Let my help come from thee in the greatest heavens and earth. The sure message of David. Unto whom the God shall arise today, Lord, help me. Pray to God today that from today you will not lack your destiny ever. You will not lose any opportunity in life. Oh, there's, there's a saying that opportunity comes once in a while. Opportunity don't come all the time, it's once in a while. The opportunity of David came, he grabbed it. Pray that God will open doors of opportunity for you too. Remember, the Bible makes us know the sun according to Ecclesiastes chapter 9. You read from verse 11 of it to 13. He said, Race is not unto the schools. Pray today to think you are going out to educated. No, sometimes education might not help you in some cases. You see, when we talk about tests, tests don't understand whether you are educated or not. Hunger don't understand that you are educated or not. Both who are illiterate and educated, they do hunger, they do test. So pray that the sure message of David, unto whom Jacob shall rise, locate you today. In the name of Jesus Christ, has the Lord God Almighty to feed every emptiness in your life. Every fragments, every space, every gap, every mesh that all mockers used to penetrate, God should close it up. When there is a crack in your life, definitely the enemy will look into that place to challenge 
Pray that the Lord will make every crack in your life, in your spiritual life, in your financial life, in your ministerial life, in your calling, that everywhere the enemy look in your life and they mock you, that the Lord should make that area now. Pray in that name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I pray for someone here. In that your situation, that your circumstances, I have a word of peace for you. And the word is that the grace of God is sufficient for you. I want you to understand what is the grace. Grace is an advocate. Grace is an elevator. Grace is a promoter. Grace speaks for you where you cannot speak for yourself. Accept that grace because the grace of God is sufficient for you. You might sit yourself down. Don't think about now. Looking forward. Looking to the day ahead. Very soon, your light will shine all over. If you are that fellow, wherever you are, I want you to shout hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank Jesus.